Good morning, I'm Janice Yu. That fire on that Italian flagship at Port Newark that started Wednesday night still continues to burn. Uh, the ship, I mean, is carrying more than a thousand cars, um, and this was headed to West Africa. It's also um, Jimmy, loaded with um, cargo as well. And as we've seen throughout the morning, cars have been exploding periodically. We have seen not only that black thick smoke rising uh, from this ship, but also uh, just instances of where we see fire. And these are actually um, live pictures you're seeing right now of the ship. John Del Giorno uh, is above for us. He just got to the scene. And John, from where you are, how are things looking today compared to yesterday? Hi there, Janice, and good morning. This is our first look at this today. The weather kept us down this morning, but the skies have cleared out a little bit for us to get overhead. So this is my first look at this. We just arrived over to the scene about five minutes ago, and the change from yesterday to today is that that 10th level deck. Now, that's where they said this fire began. It's two levels below the open air top deck there. That 10th level deck, you can see the side of the ship has completely burned out. We saw that start to discolor yesterday. As a matter of fact, the side of the ship where it's named there, that was clearly visible at this time yesterday. That has burned out overnight. So that just tells you how hot this fire has been burning during the overnight hours. However, there's still a lot of smoke coming off the ship. The smoke's a little different in color. It's not that thick black gray smoke that we saw yesterday. And what that's telling me is that they're getting more water on the fire. Definitely from yesterday to today, there are more streams of water directed at the ship itself. We still have that fireboat pumping water onto the open air rear deck, but you can see a tugboat now along with a hand line on the front of the ship. And what they're doing is just trying to keep that temperature down. That's what we've been hearing a lot of overnight from the firefighting experts. The goal here is to keep the temperature of the ship as lowered as they possibly can. And the best way to do that is to direct water at the ship. They are also being careful not to direct water into the ship because that presents a problem as all that water collects down in the bottom. Obviously something you don't want to do uh, with a ship at port. But meanwhile, the fire here you can see still continues to burn. If you're in this area, if you're driving the New Jersey Turnpike, the Newark Bay Extension, you are going to see this, this plume of smoke with the thick hazy air today. This smoke is hanging real low to the ground and drifting over towards Newark Liberty International Airport. For now, we're live over Port Newark. Back down to you, Janice. Thank you so much, John. And you know, you did talk about um, the danger of that water getting into the bottom of the boat there. So again, they are just trying to keep the temperature down essentially at this point to make sure that any of those cars, which by the way, have oil and gas in them, make sure those don't uh, ignite and cause those fires we've been seeing periodically. But you know, uh, officials do say at this point, uh, there are no electric cars on there. So no fear of lithium ion batteries. They also say there's no hazardous cargo on the ship either. And they also point out the fuel is not spilling and the ship is not in danger of sinking. So this is uh, what we heard from officials and we are waiting for a news conference right now. The Coast Guard as well as the United Command uh, or Unified Command will be holding a news conference with some hopefully updates on how they plan on getting this uh, fire put out. You can see the podium there. So we are getting ready for that um, as we speak. And we do have um, Derek Waller, who's been live at the scene uh, all morning long. He was there yesterday as well. We want to check in with him. Uh, Derek, how are things looking out there at this hour? Those incredible images from News Copter 7, always a great vantage point from up above. I'll show you what it looks like from the ground. And a similar situation here. You see that that thick black smoke that we saw earlier this morning, that has gone away. Now we see the white smoke, which is always a good indication anytime we're covering a fire. But obviously, they are still pouring water on this thing more than uh, 35 hours after it first broke out. So a, a, a situation that they're going to be dealing with for quite some time. This morning, there's still so many unanswered questions about how this happened and how we can prevent it from ever happening again. Now take a look at this infrared drone video from the Elizabeth Fire Department showing that fire still burning in the ship's interior. That video from last night, more than 24 hours after the fire started on deck 10 before extending to deck 12, which is the top deck. Now we have some more video of the fire from this morning. It was definitely burning hot this morning. The fire firefighting efforts prolonged by the car gas tanks that continue to explode, adding to the concern. A source tells ABC 
News. The Newark Fire Department's two and a half inch fire hose lines were not compatible with the European ship's one inch connections, forcing firefighters to use the inferior hose lines on the boat, a system they also were not familiar with. Newark's fire chief revealing his department does not even train for this specific scenario on a ship that experts say is difficult to navigate. Much smaller stairwells. The width of them are a lot less. Sometimes they don't have railings. Sometimes they do. Sometimes there aren't stairs. Sometimes there are ladders instead. And then you add that in where there's no ventilation. There are no windows. Uh, and if a suppression system is going off, you have to deal with that. There's slip, trip, and fall hazards all over the place on a boat. And when you're not familiar with it, it's very, very difficult. And back here live, you see those firefighting efforts continue right now, still pouring water on that Italian cargo ship filled with thousands of used cars. You know, there's been no indication that, that any human lives were at risk when firefighters actually went on to that ship, uh, raising some serious questions, of course, about safety and training. Uh, we are awaiting that news conference in just a few minutes uh, with the Coast Guard just around the corner from where we're standing. So certainly a lot of unanswered questions here. I did want to mention that I did decide to put this uh, KN95 mask on because a little while ago we could really smell this. You could smell that burning rubber, whatever else was burning. So we just wanted to be uh, safe uh, as we continue to cover this ongoing situation. Janice, I'll send it back to you. Thank you so much, Derek. Um, from where you're standing right now, I mean, can you see? I, I know we could kind of see from the aerial. Um, it does definitely look like there's more water being poured on the ship today compared to yesterday. I think yesterday it was just that one FDNY tugboat we saw in the water that was uh, spraying uh, the water onto the top part of the ship. Are you seeing? Can you see from your vantage point at all if if it looks a little different at all today in terms of how much water is being put on there? There is certainly a lot of water being put on that boat. I think yesterday uh, there was a ABC News correspondent actually reporting that uh, uh, they were taking breaks uh, with uh, pouring water on because of what John mentioned. They were concerned that, you know, a ship shouldn't be taking on all that water, so they didn't want to inundate it so much. So uh, today it looks like they are pouring more water on it, but they have been taking breaks every so now and then. Every now and then they do stop for a little bit. So uh, like we mentioned, this fire could, could last for days. And uh, as you also mentioned, that they're trying to keep the temperature down on that boat, Janice. Thank you so much, Derek. And I'm glad you put on that mask because, again, we're talking about cars that are burning and tires as well. So I'm glad you're staying safe out there. Um, and, you know, Derek touched on it, but the crux of the issue is how this all happened, right? The Newark fire chief uh, did mention yesterday that they are, firefighters are not trained for this exact scenario. They do train on uh, car uh, on ships where there are living quarters, residential quarters, uh, but not with cargo ships like this. And they also say whatever training they do, uh, it's going to end up being different in the end because these layouts change all the time. So that was adding to the difficulty as well. Uh, when these firefighters went in, they didn't know the layout. The flames were so intense, they had to back off. Um, and then that is, of course, when uh, the two firefighters, um, they were they lost contact with two of the firefighters. And I do want to talk about them uh, just really quickly. It's Augusto Akabu. Uh, he was a nine year veteran of the department. Um, he was with Engine 16. The other firefighter, Wayne Brooks Jr., who was a 16 year veteran, he was assigned to Ladder 4. Actually, though, both of them for a time did work at Engine 16, uh, both of these men in their 40s. Um, and so you know, very difficult day for uh, family members and uh, the fire union is actually supposed to speak later today um, just about their reaction to all of this and these two firefighters as well. Um, and I do want to get back to John Del Giorno, who's over the scene again. And John, um, I mean, Derek mentioned, I mean, this is not going to be a quick resolution. This fire could be burning for days at this point. Janice, from all accounts we've heard the last couple days, is that this uh, this vessel is packed with cars as tightly as you see there on the top deck. But there are 11 decks below the top, and they're all packed that tight. That's how many vehicles are on board, and that's how hard it is to actually get to the heart of this fire. If the goal is to get water on where the fire is actually burning, that is almost an impossible task here. So we're on the south side of the ship. And uh, Janice, what I mentioned before about that 10th deck, that black stripe that you see, 
that surrounds the ship. That was not there yesterday. That was painted white. And what that's telling you is that that fire in the 10th deck is burning so hot and so intense that it's discoloring this steel, this metal vessel from the inside out. And that is what the, they've been battling for the last few days. You talked about some extra streams of water. You can see they've got one remote stream set up here down on the deck of the ship that carries the containers. There is a tugboat there on the left side of the ship, the port side. And then uh, there's a couple landlines uh, that are set up over on the dock of the ship. I also read this morning that uh, they had spoken yesterday about getting a private company to come in here and uh, continue with the firefighting efforts. That uh, apparently has happened. They made contact with a salvage company. And one of the things that salvage company did was to get the ship itself kind of recharged as far as getting water into the line. So that may be what you're seeing this morning a little bit of assistance in getting more water onto the ship. And uh, finally, you know, we, I, I keep mentioning the amount of water going onto the ship and trying not to get it down below. Uh, you can see just a tremendous amount of water coming off the top deck and back down over on the other side, on the starboard side where it is docked. It's a, it's a virtual waterfall over on that side with all of the water coming off the top. So uh, that's the update from the scene. But what you see here, this fire continues to burn in that 10th deck that fire is actually burned through the wall. Wow, yeah, and you know, even yesterday we could see it and we can see it today. Uh, the water is coming off um, and we do want to get to that news conference that's happening right now. In New Jersey. After the statements are complete, we will open the floor to about after questions for about five minutes. And once we get to that point, just have you please state your name and your affiliate before asking your question. So at this time, I will turn it over to Captain Merchant. All right. Thank you. And uh, good morning, and thank you for all being here. First and foremost, we as a unified command would like to extend our heartfelt condolences to the families of our fallen Newark firefighters, Wayne Brooks Jr. and Augusto Akubo. We who have made the, who actually has Their commitment to safety and their communities in which they serve is truly immeasurable, and we will continue to honor their legacy in the work that we do every day here. I'm Jane to see you uh, cutting in with some breaking news. We want to get live to a news conference that is happening right now as the Coast Guard, as well as other agencies, talk about that deadly cargo ship fire that continues to burn today. Let's take a listen. As we continue to provide updates on the ongoing incident, Rest assured that our utmost priority is to bring the situation under control and ensure the safety of all that is involved. I would also like to extend my sincere appreciation to Chief Jackson and the entire Newark Fire Department <coughs> for their swift and decisive initial response to the incident in coordination with the numerous other fire departments that arrived on scene to support Chief Jackson is a critical member of our unified command is in, and is uh, currently tending to separate matters related to the response. But I want to take this time to acknowledge the Newark Fire Department's professionalism and dedication that played a crucial role in the early stages of containment and mitigations and the potential risks and their current uh, contributions as well. We value their partnership and collaborative efforts, which have significantly contributed to the overall response. The command priorities for this incident are clear. First and foremost, the safety of all responders is paramount. We are committed to providing a safe and secure operational environment, equipping our personnel with the necessary resources and protocols to ensure their well-being. Secondly, our focus is on suppressing and overhauling the fire on board. We have brought all resources and capabilities to bear from across the nation for this salvage and marine firefighting response. Thirdly, we are fully aware of the potential environmental impacts, including air quality and the importance of minimizing any adverse effects to the environment. Our efforts are dedicated to containing and mitigating pollution, working closely with our environmental agencies to safeguard our waterways. Lastly, we recognize the significance of maintaining the safe continuance of maritime industry and traffic. 
We are actively coordinating with all port stakeholders to minimize disruptions to commerce and our entire maritime transportation system, while ensuring the safety measures are in place to protect all vessels operating in the area. By adhering to these command priorities, we strive to achieve a comprehensive and effective response that address the safety of responders, the protection of the environment, and the continual functioning of the maritime industry. The fire on board the Grand Ocasta de Boria has been burning now for approximately 36 hours since our agencies arrived on scene. Firefighter crews are actively working to extinguish the fire from both the pier and water side, and the vessel rep will pr provide an update on current operations momentarily. As a recap, the ship originally caught fire Wednesday night around 9.30 p.m. when vehicles were being loaded onto the vessel. The onboard fire uh, suppression system was immediately activated by the crew, and the Newark Fire Department <coughs> swiftly responded. With regards to our operation, salvage and specifically shipboard firefighting is an extremely complex operation and requires responders to consider long-term <laughs> firefighting efforts, damage and discretion of the vessel, and environmental impacts, which is why we have brought some of the world's top salvers and marine firefighters uh, experts here to this response. As stated, our number one priority is safety to our responders while efficiently extinguishing the fire, and this requires careful coordination for our firefighters and fire suppression mechanism being utilized. It is my duty as the captain of the port and the federal on-scene coordinator to address any situations that may threaten people, the environment, port infrastructures, while promoting safe, secure, and environmental sound port operations. <laughs> as such, this incident requires a unity of effort among federal, state, and local agencies to respond and serve the entire community. This is why we have created the Unified Command consisting of the Coast Guard, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, the Newark Fire Department, and Gallagher Marine System, who is rep uh, representing the ship owners and operators to respond to this incident together. Once the firefighting efforts are complete, a formal investigation will be conducted to determine the cause of the fire. At this point, all federal agencies, state, local levels, in addition to the owners of the vessels, will be working closely together <coughs> to identify the root cause of the fire and the subsequent fatalities to prevent similar incidents from ever happening again. At this time, I would like to invite the Newark Public Safety Director, Fritz Frage, to the mic for a few comments representing the city as well as the Newark Fire Department. Good morning. The city of Newark wants to thank everybody on this stage for their support, especially the coordination and collaboration to help mitigate this current matter. Currently, the city of Newark is really uh, trying to assist the family in reference to this tragic loss of two loved ones. Uh, unfortunately, Chief Jackson could not be here today. We were both in a meeting this morning with the families to try and coordinate the uh, funeral and the send-off for the family. He sends his regards, and he will be here at the next meeting to discuss uh, the collaboration uh, reference this current situation. The families are doing well, uh, as well as they can be at this time. Uh, you've lost two loved ones, the entire fire department, police department, OEM, the entire public safety is mourning the loss of uh, both these two firefighters. Going forward, we appreciate all the help and support we're getting for all the agencies, our sister firefighters uh, from state and federal levels that are assisting us during this traumatic time for the city. We'll be advising you of the uh, information reference to funeral services that will be scheduled sometime next week. Uh, the families appreciate all of the support. They want, also want to send their regards. Uh, we will be to, here to assist. The only other city concerns are just the support of the families, whether it's mentally, physically, just to take the time to go forward and, and rebuild their lives and never forget the loved ones that uh, they've lost. Uh, the Newark firefighters will be etched in <coughs> the city's history, the public safety's history, and the fire department's history forever. Lost but not forgotten. Thank you very much for this time. I'd like to turn it over to Tom Weikert, who will brief you on the results of the current status. Thank you.
Good morning. My name is Tom Weicker. I'm with Gallagher Marine Systems. We are representing the ship owners, Grimaldi Deep Sea of Naples, Italy. Uh, first and foremost, on behalf of Grimaldi and Gallagher Marine Systems, we'd like to echo Captain Merchant's sentiments by offering our sincere condolences and thoughts to the families of the fallen firefighters and those responders who have been injured battling the fire aboard the vessel. I'd like to thank the brave firefighting crews that are out there currently and their continued efforts to keep the fire under control. We'd also like to thank the crew whose bravery, bravery and prompt response played a crucial role in containing the initial fire aboard the vessel. Gallagher Marine are listed as the incident management team for Grimaldi's U.S. Coast Guard approved vessel response plan. Additionally listed there is salvage provider Don John Smith. I'm joined here today by, uh, by Gordon Lawrenson, who's been out on scene fighting the fire. Uh, he serves as our subject matter expert for questions related to the firefighting. But in the interim, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background in terms of where we are today. So the firefighting uh, update is that teams are fighting a variety of fire, fires amongst the several decks in the superstructure, which when you look at the vessel, very easily, it's just the white part of the ship that's aft. To combat that, there's a team of 20-plus firefighters and additional salvage support who have been fighting this fire around the clock since it began. We also have a New York fire boat and other firefighting resources deployed, both pier and waterside. The number of firefighters on scene today will increase by nine personnel. Vessel stability. Currently, the vessel is stable with a list to starboard side. We're continuing to monitor the status of the vessel and actions are planned to mitigate further listing as necessary. Pollution report. There's no, no reported release of oil from the vessel as of yet. Yesterday morning, there were some unconfirmed reports of sheen in the area, but we verified by both drone and water side assessment that there was no uh, sheening uh, noted. Air monitoring, I know that for the community here, there's a lot of concern over that. We have active air monitoring that's going on. There are four stationary air monitoring devices proximate to the ship. Additionally, we have a mobile air monitoring unit being used in the surrounding areas at the port, Marsh, Corbin, and Kellogg Streets. That's about a 1.1 mile uh, distance from the epicenter, which is the ship. Overnight, we had two occurrences of sulfur dioxide readings at the stern of the ship. They were moderately above what we call actionable levels. Those levels were not seen outside the immediate area. They were seen at the stern of the vessel. We took action to move personnel away as necessary, and then when that, those levels became safe, we brought personnel back to the area. Otherwise, there have been no reports of excessive uh, reading, air quality readings around the area, even beyond that proximate to the ship. Water sampling, sampling and an abundance of uh, caution, we're developing a plan for water sampling of known contaminants and expect that sampling will commence later this afternoon when our plan is in place. We'll monitor for byproducts and hazardous materials that may have entered the water due to firefighting activities. Finally, we'd like to reiterate that we are committed to a speedy and comprehensive resolution of this unfortunate incident. We, along with our port, our port partners, are deploying all available resources to ensure that that happens. Beth? Good morning. Uh, thank you, Tom. Again, my name is Beth Rooney, and I am the Port Director for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. On behalf of the Board of Commissioners, uh, Chairman Kevin O'Toole, Executive Director Rick Cotton, and all of the staff of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, we join in extending our, our sympathies uh, to the families of the lost firefighters and our uh, best wishes for a full and complete recovery of those that were injured uh, during this incident. From a broader port perspective, uh, as part of the Unified Command, uh, we're working on that common set of objectives that Captain Merchant uh, described. In addition to what is going on on scene at the fire itself, we're concerned, the Port Authority, about maintaining commerce uh, in the rest of the port complex. Uh, to that end, uh, we have been working closely with the Unified Command uh, to manage uh, and understand uh, various impacts that, that may be uh, evolving. Uh, the channel in which the vessel is tied up has been closed uh, to ship traffic. As a result of that, 
Uh, there is modest amount of cargo activity that has been impacted, predominantly due, due in due to automobiles, so additional car carriers uh, that were expected to call the port within the last 36 hours uh, have been impacted. Uh, they remain at anchor until we can get those ships in in, in order to work them. We're working with the stevedores and the terminal operators and the auto processors in order to work through contingency plans in order to move that cargo. As you know, our container business is really as the second uh, largest port in the country and the largest on the East Coast. Uh, moving the containers um, is vitally important to us because we are dependent upon 95 percent of the goods that are contained in those containers uh, every day of our lives. The good news is uh, that the impact on the container terminals has been uh, completely negligible. About 99.5% of our container activity is unimpacted uh, by these events uh, so far. Again, we continue to monitor and we will work closely with the terminal operators uh, in order to it mitigate uh, any impact. Uh, we continue to work with other uh, tenants and businesses uh, within the area through contingency plans. Uh, but, uh, again, to keep commerce moving, uh, the work that the Unified Command uh, has been doing and our thanks and praise to all of the uh, response agencies, federal, state and local, uh, in order to not only address the fire uh, but to protect the rest of the port uh, from further damage uh, is, is greatly appreciated. So, um, you know, we will continue to work uh, as my partners on the Unified Command, you know, have said until this incident is under control uh, and then uh, we will, you know, move forward and uh, get the complete port uh, fully up and operational uh, as soon as we can thereafter. Thank you. All right. At this time, we'd like to open the floor to questions. We have about five minutes. Please state your name, affiliation, and who your question is directed toward. Yes, in front. Good morning, John Miles, W. We cannot speak to the second question in terms of the first responders that went in. Uh, we could defer that to the Newark Fire Department. Um, can you repeat your first question again, please? Uh, projected timeline. Yeah, so projected timeline. timeline. At this point, uh, the fire is going to burn for a couple more days, probably. Uh, it's impossible to give you really any kind of definitive timeline. Um, Don John are going through doing their best to do assessment, but as the captain said, our primary uh, objective is safety. So we are going to do the utmost to make sure that we do our best to fight this fire, but we're going to do it with the safety of responders as our first objective. Um, as and when we move through this process, we will most certainly let people know what we project, but at this point it's impossible. Yes. Right. Next question. Uh, right here. Hey, this is for the uh, Port Director for the Port Authority and for the Public Safety Director for the And uh, I'd like to go on to the FOLC. That's the most important thing. To do. But moving forward, I wanted to ask those two directors is there an agreement between the City of Newark and the Port Authority in terms of the response to fires at the port and, in particular, shipboard fires? <laughs> and does it spell out? how and uh, the kind of equipment and what the fire department will need to, uh, to respond to those kind of attacks. Yes, yes, there is an agreement with the uh, police department, Port Authority, and uh, the port in reference to how we respond uh, to fires here at, at the port. Uh, we, support, we respond to all structure fires that they have. Those agreements are ongoing and continue collaboration as they go forward. We continue to have these conversations today and going forward. We're currently scheduling some training with the police and the fire in reference to uh, fires that happen here. 
Uh, there's going to be some more co coordination and collaboration with the police department and Port Authority on how we uh, we navigate and we actually uh, mitigate some of the fires that may happen on these courts. These are all continued, um, and we can discuss that at a later time further. Next question. If I, uh, uh, Mr. Hill, if I can just add to that. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as, as Mr. Fritz said, you know, there are agreements in place, and, and we rely very heavily on the local municipalities around all of the Port Authority facilities. I believe many, you know, uh, in the media are familiar with the Port Authority's aircraft uh, rescue teams and the fire brigades that are at the airports. Uh, those are unique to the airports. Those are required by federal aviation regulations. Uh, and they are not um, fire departments. They are there strictly to respond to the first 10 minutes or so and be able to evacuate uh, the plane. And then we rely on the likes of Newark Fire Department and, and the New York City uh, Fire Department. So we do not have um, a fire uh, department within the Port of port Authority of New York and New Jersey. We do currently rely on the local municipalities. But again, as this investigation unfolds, everything is on the table for consideration. I would say that is currently a part of our investigation. We can't confirm that at this point in time, but it's a part of what we're looking at in the investigation, and that information will come out then. Roger, uh, thank you for the question. Actually, uh, a part of what we do as far as the Coast Guard and a federal entity, we have a uh, fire task force that is a part of a New Jersey uh, fire task force, and they actually come together and we train with them on a regular basis. So uh, while we, uh, Newark Fire Department was the first people on scene, being that they were closest, you also know there were other fire departments that also deployed and was a part of this response. We will continue to do that training, but it is a part of what we do and we oversee on a regular basis uh, here in the port. Yeah. Again, again, as I mentioned, you know, earlier, as the investigations uh, unfold and we get lessons learned from these, uh, everything is on the table uh, for consideration. If I can add to Captain Merchant's comments about the the task force, you know, one of the major lessons learned from 9/11 as we evaluated, you know, the overall risk to the port and the port community was an understanding of the, the unique environment, as, as has been described several times. Marine firefighting is a very complex and challenging uh, environment. So as part of the Area Maritime Security Committee, which is required by federal law under uh, the captain's guidance, I actually was the founding chair of that uh, back in 2002, uh, Joe Farley, is the current uh, chair, we actually created uh, this task force that allows us to ensure that departments have the proper marine firefighting resources and we also provide uh, training. The New Jersey Department of Homeland Security uh, is a major player uh, within that. And uh, we provide both classroom training uh, to uh, our local municipal uh, fire agencies and shipboard orientation training. Uh, in fact, starting next week with a new cohort uh, of firefighters in the region, we were scheduled to uh, come into the container terminals in order to get on board uh, container ships. And, and that's just one of dozens of evolutions of these trainings that we've done uh, over the last two decades. Uh, 
and, and one thing, I'll speak uh, quickly on the federal level because we do training, but they also do training at the local level. But the trainings that we do are regular, and what you see even with uh, FDNY being on scene, it's more than just what we have here in the New Jersey area. It is a regional uh, support that we get whenever we're dealing with a Marine or shipboard firefighting, and that is training that is done here in this area locally, as well as throughout the New York and New Jersey area. And so that, that training is done regularly from a federal uh, standpoint, and then they also uh, conduct that training at a state and local level. And uh, Fritz, do you want to add anything else to yeah, that? I, I just want to add that this is basically what we call mutual aid. So when we have large fires, there's mutual aid. Uh, certain agencies have equipment that other agencies can't have due to financial constraints or personnel constraints. Like, for instance, uh, the NYPD has a huge ship that comes into the water, and they can fight the, the fire from the water. We know they have that ship there, so when these calls are made, NYPD is notified to bring their ship on board to assist in that fire. We had, uh, I believe, Westfield Police, I mean the West, Westfield Fire, Jersey City, Hudson County. When we have fires that are overwhelming, besides the fact that we have to call our firefighters to come fight the fire on the port, we have to call mutual aid to have certain cities go back to our firehouses in Newark to ensure that if there's a fire in Newark, we could also mitigate those circumstances. So if we pull out all hands on deck, or uh, 10 of our, our units have to go to this fire, we'll call the surrounding towns and they'll back them. So the training is, doing, is done at the, uh, the local level, which includes to the, to the, to the state level, and then the county and with Port Authority. It's ongoing, it's, it's important. We do it together in a sense, and that's how uh, we uh, do the training. Last question. I have a question, please. I, I, we've had um, a feeding problem. If you could please uh, repeat exactly what your operational plan is for today, and do you have a fear of any sort of debt collapse within, within the partnership? Please repeat today. Yeah, first I'd like to start uh, on behalf of Don John Smith giving our condolences to the firefighters lost in the initial response. Um, our plan for today is uh, to contain the fire, to cool the vessel so the fire no longer spreads throughout the vessel, uh, to keep it toward the top decks where it's currently located. We're also working on dewatering the vessel, getting rid of the water that is being put on the vessel via the fire pumps, and taking some of the list out of the vessel so that it becomes more stable. The vessel is currently remains stable at this period in time. All right, so you've been listening to a press conference with the Coast Guard, the Port Authority, as well as uh, Newark officials. We will continue our streaming coverage on ABC 7 NY. Uh, for now, we will return you to your normal programming, um, and you can join us at noon for a full update on this. Yeah. So shipboard fires are very unique. Uh, they're constantly changing. Every single one's different. You can do all the training in the world, and you're going to find something you've never seen before on a shipboard fire. So access is tough. Um, the heat is extreme. It's a steel box. So it's very complex situation, uh, and you need a very good plan to be able to put firefighters in the vessel to actually put out these fires. Uh, the, it's burning very hot. So currently, a lot of the decks that are burning and the cars that are burning are inaccessible to our fire teams. Uh, the so shipping, the ship's company, excuse me. And we do want to turn to an expert now, um, former FDNY um, Commissioner Thomas Von Essen. Um, he's joining us now. And, and Tom, I know you have a, a, a unique perspective on all of this, but when you hear the officials talk about, you know, this fire is going to be burning for uh, at least several more days um, and just the difficulty of, of navigating this this ship and um, everything that's on there. What are your concerns from uh, the the um, what are your concerns as firefighters once you know the water they've done pouring water on it going in and actually finishing this this process? What are your biggest concerns? Well, to a firefighter now, this is just what we call surround and drown. The uh, dangerous part is over. It, now it's just a question of how much damage to the ship and to the contents. 
What was glaring to me during that whole press conference and everybody was talking about all the regional cooperation and all the stuff that everybody does together. They talked about experts arriving. I'd be curious to know when they arrived. And also uh, the, the, the shipboard firefighting crew is critical to the first arriving firefighters. The first arriving firefighters have no clue what they're going into. So they rely on those folks that are that live on that ship, that work on that ship, that are responsible for trying to put the, a fire out that, that when it first happens. And sometimes they become overwhelmed. But you need a team of those folks that can help our guys understand what they're up against and to have our guys not go into a situation that can be as dangerous maybe as that one was. Those guys got trapped in there and that's a horrible, horrible way to die. Yeah, and you know, going off of what you just mentioned, the big question here, and the thing that um, you know maybe fell short was the lack of training for something like this. And we do understand the difficulty. Um, we had an expert on yesterday who kind of talked about the difficulty of training with a ship like this. The layout changes all the time, uh, even if they do training with um, ships that have uh, you know residential quarters, living quarters. It's quite different than a ship like this carrying uh, shipping containers and cars. And I understand this is Port Authority property, but Newark uh, Fire was in charge of responding to this. Moving forward, I mean, what kind of training do you think needs to be done? What kind of conversations need to be had so something like this doesn't end up happening again? I think no matter how much training you give to a, a small group of people, you don't know who's going to show up that day. You don't know who the first five firefighters are going to be uh, and they get up those 10 floors into a very dangerous situation. It's critical. Those guys know how to put out fires and they train regularly on different types of situations. And they will, um, you know, they'll, they're familiar with a, a situation where everything is uh, very, very hot and there's dangers of explosion. What they need when they get there is for somebody who understands what they're up against to stay with them and let them know uh, how far they should go and how far they shouldn't go. And I think that I don't know, we, you know there'll be an investigation. We can all, uh, you know, guess on what happened. But to me, no matter how much training we give our guys, um, you, you're always going to have a situation like this where they run into a, uh, a scenario that they haven't been able to plan for, that the cars are set up in a different way, that it's a seven foot ceiling instead of a 10 foot ceiling, that there's no uh, avenue for them to take a hose line down, that they don't have a, a hose line that's big enough, that the water's not powerful enough. There's dozens of situations that, you know, good firefighters will run into and have to change their normal way of doing things. What they really need was to know what they're up against. And I would guess that uh, that's that what was is what was missing. OK, I, yeah, I understand. And, you know, as someone with your background and expertise, when you look at these pictures of that ship, um, you know, it's it's burned on the side that the, the name was visible yesterday on the side of the ship that is no longer visible. You see the smoke coming uh, earlier. We saw black smoke. Now we're seeing white smoke. We're seeing the um, the uh, cars igniting every now and then. I mean, with your background and expertise, what are you thinking and seeing when you look at these pictures? Well, you have fires like this that just are very, very difficult to finally put out. I mean, there's no more danger, you know, I hope, to uh, firefighters going in there. And they should be all in a, in a safe position where if something collapses, they're not going to be caught. If something melts and, and uh, expands, they're not going to be, uh, you know, you would hope that all those safety precautions are in now. Now it's really just going to be how much damage and, um, you know, uh, to that ship. Uh, that part of it, I think the uh, fellow from the, the shipping group said that it's not damaged to any significant point uh, at this point, at least uh, navigation-wise. Now, how much uh, repairs and everything it's going to need in dry dock, I would imagine it's going to be out for quite a while. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your insight. I do want to run through uh, just some points before we go to John Del Giorno, um, who's over overhead for us. You know, we we heard from a, a number of officials, and, and something that stood out to me um, was... The fact that, um, again, th there are going to have to be conversations about the relationship between Port Authority and Newark Fire when it comes to things like this. Um, I understand um, 
again, you're looking at live pictures. You're looking at live pictures right now of um, the scene. So uh, in the news conference, they were talking about how this will be uh, burning for the next several days. It's impossible to tell the exact timeline, but when it comes to that fire, uh, we've been told that that will be at least a couple of days and all of the officials who spoke uh, really stressed the point that they at this point safety is the number one priority, so they are not going to rush anything. They are going to do what they need to do to make sure this is put out in the safest way possible. And and back to that tra the issue of training. Um, what we were told, and um, this was an official with the Port Authority. You know, when you go to the airport, there is a fire brigade there. They are in charge um, of you know whatever fire may happen at an airport. That actually is required by the federal government. The federal aviation regulations require that that fire brigade is there. When it comes to um, the ports like th this one, there is no requirement. Um, there's no uh, requirement like that. So that is something that's going to have to be a part of the conversation moving forward. I do want to send it to uh, John Del Giorno, who's in Newscopter 7 right now. And John, um, you know, you heard what the officials said in this news conference. Um, I mean, your thoughts this again, they said this. There's no timeline as to when this is all going to be wrapped up. Well, Janice, uh, there was a lot to unpack in that news conference. And as journalists, you know, you're, you're asking my thoughts on the press conference. I still think all of us that have been watching this since yesterday, there still seems to be a bit of a disconnect between what the Port Authority and the Unified Command is telling us about the firefighting effort and what we're all seeing. And I, I'm just being honest about that. Um, they are still trying to get their communication straight down there. And granted, there are a lot of agencies that are involved here, but I think uh, Commissioner Von Essen was just on with you. And I think he's thinking the same thing. We're, we're hearing a lot of information, but we're not really seeing where this all comes together. And in the background, we're mourning the loss of two lives and we're still watching this ship burn in its slip. Let me, uh, let me put together some of the information that was given to us at the press conference. First of all, they talked about the possibility of a sheen in the water. That was something they talked about earlier. That would indicate some fuel leaking out of the ship and into the water. The officials at the press conference said they investigated that. They looked at it with uh, their eyes and with drones, and they're not seeing a sheen down in the water. Uh, I would concur with that from the air. I'm not seeing that, so that's a little bit of good news. They mentioned that the ship is listing to starboard. So from the air, that would mean the ship has a slight tilt towards the dock, towards the right. Uh, that I can actually see from up here. It's slight, but it is leaning that direction. And that would go in line with what we've been talking about with all of the water being poured onto this boat. Not all that water is coming off the ship and it's all going down into the bottom. So they're going to make efforts with onboard pumps to try and mitigate that and make the ship more stable. They are monitoring the air around here, and I'm going to pull this shot out for a second. The smoke is drifting towards the east, so it's drifting over the New Jersey Turnpike and basically right towards the north end of Newark Liberty Airport. That's what you see off in the distance. I suppose the good news is that there are no residential areas around here, but so far they've been monitoring the air, uh, air levels. They found some elevated levels of sulfur on the rear of the ship. Um, and that might be why you see them stop the firefighting efforts from time to time. But overall, the air isn't much of a problem. And finally, they talked about this slip being closed. The container business at the port, that is basically business as usual. The slip on both sides, you see all those white vehicles there. Those are all new cars that come in from overseas. Uh, they are holding shipments right now. So there, it sounds like there's one or more ships that are due to dock here at the terminal and offload cars. Those are being held out at port, they're at anchor, and uh, basically waiting for the firefighting efforts here to come to a conclusion. But Janice, as you said, uh, the officials there said that the firefighting efforts could last several days. As I zoom down, I'm now seeing black smoke coming out of the ship. And what that indicates is that yet another car, at least one of them, is on fire down below deck. So this is gonna be the kind of firefight you're looking at here, according to the officials, probably for several days back down to you. Thank you so much, John. Um, and you know, you can join us um, throughout the uh, day um, at noon. We will have a recap on all of the updates that was just given to us. And you can, of course, always um, go on our website for the newest information. Thank you so much.